All right, so forget about trickle-down. There's no such thing as trickle-down. In fact, this latest stimulus is fact of that because according to a new study from Stanford, over the next five years, all of that cash that went out there will end up with the top 1%. So here it is. One person's spending is another person's income. And when it comes to Americans receiving the kind of financial windfall we just saw, we're talking trillions of dollars dropped by the Biden administration, it does mean others will make a fortune off of that. But you know what? It's called trickle-up, which is why we should avoid Avoid politics of envy. With me now, Botson Group founder, chief investment officer, David Botson. And David, you know, this us versus them kind of thing is nuts. Ironically, you know, the, the effort to put in free money to prove that modern monetary theory works uh, not only has sparked runaway inflation, but according to Stanford, over the next five years, almost all that money will find itself into the pockets of the 1%. Well, at the end of the day, I think the biggest problem, Charles, is just rooting any economic policy or intent around class warfare, around the belief that what we ultimately need is to demonize people that produce and that we want to give things to people and that that somehow is helping them, as opposed to treating every human being as if they were created by God with dignity and are all capable of producing in the economy. This is the issue, is it's a worldview problem. They don't understand what God made humanity for. It's a worldview problem, but in an American-centric one with respect to, you heard the sound bites, with respect to that being the, the, the reason to push through policies that, in my mind, ironically, ironically make it harder for lower-income folks, make it harder for middle-income, middle Americans. For instance, next week, they're going to change the mortgage laws. If you've got a great FICO score, you have to pay more money. That's not the rich. Mm -hmm. This is going to hurt a lot of, David, this is going to hurt a lot of people who make 400000 or less. What they do is they save their money. They skip the parties. They sacrifice. They built their scores up. And now they're going to be penalized when they go to buy a house. Well, that's exactly right. But that bad policy comes from the bad worldview. It comes from the bad thinking and ideology that doesn't understand incentives. It doesn't understand the way the world works. So to incentivize bad behavior is the same thing as to punish good behavior. These things come from the same flawed reasoning. This idea of, of punishing people with good credit scores is outrageous. And there can be people with $70,000 of income that have good credit right. scores. Right. So the entire thing is misguided, and I think it's going to politically backfire, Charles. Yeah. And, and sadly, a lot of people who will get the discounted homes won't be able to, in the long run, or even short run, afford them. So we're not necessarily doing them any favors. I want to switch gears a minute, though, right. to this Inflation Reduction Act. You just heard Grady's reporting. Now they're saying the climate component alone, un underestimated by at least $600 billion over 10 years. It's just the latest study. I I'm sure you're not surprised, because I bet you more studies are going to come out. And this thing is going to be a gargantuan. I mean, I think it's going to be trillions of dollars, David. Yeah, I mean, I don't know because there is so many variables in it that could turn knobs multiple ways. But the thing that stuck out to me was the comments from the White House about, well, many experts say, yeah. okay, first of all, whatever many experts <laughs> say, be very careful. But, but second of all, Charles, that she was saying it to uh, combat what the CBO said. And this is something I'm tired of from the left and the right. You can't use the CBO whenever they agree with what you want right. and, then, and then refute them when they disagree with what you want. It, there's a total lack of objectivity here. The um, reality is everybody knew that this thing was underpriced in the way it was being scored. Sure. It was politically driven. And ultimately, over time, it isn't just it's going to cost more than they said. It's not even going to happen because well, the energy aspirations of this bill are totally unrealistic. I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, this whole notion that America, which is, this, you know, really in the grand scheme of things, a small nation is going to solve the world's climate uh, problems where China's building a coal plant every single week. Uh, it's, it's, it's so crazy in of yeah. itself that you just have to wonder why are we making Americans suffer economically for something yeah. like this when we don't we're not the solution per se. And, and and I have an economically great way that helps Americans that also reduces the uh, environmental issues they're worried about. A little company today called ExxonMobil released earnings up again. It's the number one performing energy stock in the world this year. It's up uh, basically about 150 percent since COVID. And you know what they announced? They spent six billion dollars, not a trillion, not six hundred billion, six billion on CapEx that's helping to reduce carbon mm -hmm. emissions. You need oil and gas. 
you're going to have to use oil and gas. Exxon is going to find a way to do it using less carbon. I would invest more in Exxon than I would in the Inflation Reduction Act. Thank you very much. Uh, on that note, have a great weekend. David Bonson, we appreciate you.